Hey guys, welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. This week we're going to talk about one that you've been asking for, Dario Dario, the scarlet bodice or the scarlet gem. They are a super teeny little fish out of India at just barely over half an inch, but their attitude more than makes up for their small stature. We're going to take a look in their quarantine tank and hope that we can see their behavior and part of the reason why they've become arguably one of the most popular nano fishes in the hobby. Let's take a look. Today we're taking a look at Dario Dario, which are phenomenally beautiful, tiny little fish that come out of India from shallow, clear streams that have gravel and then really dense marginal vegetation. So that means in your fish tank at home, you're going to want a lot of structure. And this is especially important with this fish because the males set up very clear breeding territories, generally about an eight inch square, and they defend them mercilessly. So if you're going to be keeping uh, several of these in a tank, you're going to need to make sure that you set up multiple potential spawning territories or else the males will fight almost constantly to try and establish dominance. If you provide a bunch of areas of dense planting and some flat um, sort of surfaces, then your males will disperse their aggression a lot more and you'll have better success with them. Ideally, you would keep these guys with a harem of females, but females are pretty hard to come by and there's a few reasons for that. You know, a lot of people say that females are just not collected, but I think what it really is is that it can be pretty difficult to tell subdominant males from females. Females are generally smaller. They are generally sort of squatter bodied. But in these juvenile fish, it can be really hard to tell whether it's a young male or um, a young female. Now the females can get some barring, but they're lacking that really bright red coloration in most cases. And we'll look around in the tank in a minute and see if I can find one to show you. I personally don't sell this fish sexed because I'm never completely positive on the gender except for the most dominant males. When the male is dominant, they get a blue sheen to the red body and their pectoral fins get almost black with that blue-white edging. They're really, really beautiful. Now these guys are difficult for a few reasons. One is it's difficult to get the right gender ratio, but it's also hard to feed them because they really prefer live foods. We can see a female or potentially a male, a subdominant male in the middle of the frame there. Now this is where it gets tricky because this fish is noticeably smaller, has much less coloration and sort of subdominant barring. But this could very easily be a sneaker male as well, though I would guess this fish is most likely female. It's very rare that there are obvious females in the groups. As micropredators, it's really important to offer these guys live foods, white worms, daphnia, things like that, banana worms, walter worms, grindles, all work really well. While they'll eventually take dried foods, they really just have such a strong prey drive that it's really important to, to offer them live if you want to house them long term. Now, also because of their strong prey drive, when you're breeding them, you're going to need to pull the eggs. Interestingly enough, they're substrate spawners that form pair bonds, which is unusual for small fish. The males get extremely intensely colored and then the females will scatter the eggs and the male will defend them until they hatch. Generally it takes about two to three days for the eggs to hatch, at which time if you haven't pulled them, they will be eaten. So it's best to pull the eggs as soon as you see them. Now it takes about a week for these babies to absorb their yolk sac before you have to offer them foods. Here we can see a dominant male, a less dominant male, possibly a female in the middle there. Again, it's hard to say. I like to keep these guys with Bararis, uh, Petruithes loaches, or other really small, peaceful fish. It's pretty easy for them to be outcompeted for food. So really, it would be best to keep them in a species tank. 
They're really, really rewarding because they're so darn sassy. The males move in short little bursts, extending those pectoral fins, similar to like a gourami. And they're often actively engaged at the front of the tank. As you can see here, you can see those short bursts extending the pectoral fins. Really lovely little fish. I definitely think that they're one for a slightly more advanced hobby hobbyist um, just because of their unique dietary needs. But certainly not exceptionally difficult to keep. I've also found that females generally move in a gliding fashion and stay lower in the tank than the males. But that's just an anecdotal way to sex them. You can see there's one that has a lot less color. That's likely a female. But you can tell that this size, it's, it's really difficult to tell by body shape. All in all, these are a really rewarding and engaging, colorful fish to keep. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, newsjames.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. As always, if there's species you'd like to see me talk about or topics you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below.